Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Walter Brennan, Charlotte Greenwood, Edward Ryan, Gene Crane, and June Haver in Home in Indiana. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. In his book, America Learns to Play, Foster Ray Dulles has told the history of our country in terms of sport. He points out something I never knew before, that the pastime which has most intrigued us through the years and which has most closely paralleled our history and development is the trotting race. Horse racing, of course, belongs to the ages, but the trotting race belongs to America and to America alone. And tonight's Lux Radio Theater play, Home in Indiana, the 20th Century Fox hit, brings you some of the fascination and excitement of the harness race, a story of love and jealousy, of heartbreak and triumph, against a background of thundering hooves and swirling dust. And in their original screen roles, you'll hear Walter Brennan, Charlotte Greenwood, Jean Crane, and June Haver. When I saw Home in Indiana... It seemed so typically American in its background and color and spirit that I was mighty glad that it would go by short ways to our soldiers overseas, for whom the Lux Radio Theater is, I think, a, a friendly and familiar link with home. We get a lot of mail from our overseas audience and from their parents. One mother forwarded us a letter from her son, a sergeant in New Guinea, who tells of doing his own washing in a tub of water heated with a homemade blowtorch and generously studded with Lux Flakes. His simple directions are, are marvelous. We just dump the dirty clothes in and then stir until the water's dirty. <laughs> well, blowtorch heating may be something new in washing clothes, but not Lux Flakes, even in the South Pacific. And now for our play, as the curtain rises on Act One of Home in Indiana, starring Walter Brennan as Thunder, Charlotte Greenwood as Penny, Edward Ryan as Spark, Jean Crane as Char, and June Haver as Cree Cree. If you've ever been to an old-fashioned county fair, you know that the king of the fair is the trotting horse, and the supreme event is harness racing. You know, too, that the farmhand with one horse, which he himself has trained, and he himself may drive, is every bit the equal of the county square. For harness racing is the sport of gentlemen, rich and poor, competing not just for money and silver cups, but for the sheer love of the trotting horse and the betterment of the brood and the breed. We got the telegram before we got the boy. Come from Connecticut, it did, from some sheriff up there. The visitor coming, Penny, a boy. Well, read it to me. What's it say? Uh, this will introduce your nephew, Spark Thornton, who was bequeathed to you by your sister, the late Miss Henrietta Bolt. As you may know, Miss Henrietta raised the boy since your other sister's death several years ago. In accordance with Miss Henrietta's wishes, we have paid his bus fare and therefore assume no further responsibility. He should arrive early Thursday afternoon. How old is the boy, Thunder? Uh, don't exactly know. Reckon about 16. I'll fix up the spare room. Thursday, he said, huh? Tomorrow. I'll get into town and meet him. That's how Sparky Thornton come to Roundhouse Farm. When Thunder opened the door and told him to come in, there was a funny sort of look in his eyes like he was trying to find another door that would let him out. This here's your Aunt Penelope, son. Hello, Sparky. Come here. You a bad boy? That's what they say. You do, huh? Well, there ain't a place on earth with more room for a boy to be bad in than Roundhouse Farm. Got itself so overgrown with quiet that anything would come as a relief. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <clears throat> show him where to stow his dunnage, Thunder. Yeah, this way, son. I'll show you your field chores, too. 
I was in the kitchen later when I saw Sparky disappearing through the cornfield. I might have called Thunder. But if the boy was going to stay, he'd have to decide for himself. I knew what he'd see beyond the cornfield. A board fence six feet tall that's kept us apart from that farm beyond for 18 years. But sure as fate, he'd be a climbing the fence and seeing what for. That's it, Miss George. That's it. Gosh. Gosh. Get the half-mile bowl and let him out. I'm ready. Get down there, mister. Huh? Oh. Who's you smooching around here? Uh, I'm Spark Thornton. Mr. Bolt's my uncle. Who are you? I works for your uncle. I'm Tuppy. What you fooling around that fence for? Oh, I was just looking. All those horses and stables and an exercise track. Roundhouse here make that place look like the poor house. Roundhouse? This? Before you was born, more records was busted by horses trained by Mr. Thunder than they got horseshoes next door. Oh, I didn't know Mr. Bolt was a trainer. What's that? That's a lady. My uncle's got horses? Only one. Lady, the only one left. Well, could, could I see her? Come along, boy. Gosh, she sure is pretty. Hello there, lady. Say, Tuppy, how old is... Why, why, she's blind. Blind is deep sleep. Lady, poor old lady. No, no poor old lady. What? Lady don't need no more eyes. Plenty of horses with two good eyes that ain't never seen what the lady sees. She sees the finish line first. Tuppy, when does Mr. Bolt work her out? He don't work out. I gives her a mile a day on the lead ring. Maybe sometime I'll let you take her. If you're going to be around. Oh, sure, sure. I'll be around. I told him next morning how to find his way to school. He started out all right, but he never did see school. He went back again to that board fence and climbed over and headed straight for one of their stables. Had a man-eating stallion in there, but Sparky didn't know that. Whoa, boy, whoa, easy now. Trying to get through, that's all, boy. Whoa, whoa. There. That's better. That's better. Hey, you crazy fool. Get away from there. I'm a coming out, not a going in. Where the devil did you come from? Came through in there? That stall? Don't you lie to me, boy. Now beat it. Well, maybe if I was to go back through there and out again, maybe you could use me as a handyman. Get away from that stall before you get killed. Oh, it's all right. Hey. Quiet, boy. Easy now. Easy. See? He's not afraid of me. Well, you just look. Oh, oh, whoa now, whoa, boy. Hey, get out of there. Yes, sir. I'm sorry I called you a liar, boy. Oh, oh, you all right, sir? Yeah, sure. Go back to work. Hey, what's going on? Nothing at all. Hey, son, how come you know so much about handling a killer like that Hamilcar chief? Huh? You see that sign on the stall? Hamilcar chief. Visitors keep away. Go to our bull. Uh, are you Mr. Bull? I work for Mr. Bull. You see, I'm... He's our trainer. And I'm Mr. Bull's daughter. Say, Jed, it seems to me there ought to be a place here for a man not scared of the chief. Oh, thank you. You must be terribly brave. Or terribly dumb. What's your name? Oh, I'm Spark Thornton, and I guess I'm dumb. Can you drive a sulky, Sparky? Oh, yes, sir. Well, then come along. Let's see you jog a couple of laps. Gosh, sure have got a lot of horses around here. <laughs> yeah, a few. This way, boy. Daddy? Hi. Hey, who's that driving? New kid around here. Why does he stop jerking those reins? I'll ask him when he pulls up. No, I'll ask him now. Come on, boy. Hey, what's the reins? What are you trying to do? Get off the track. Do you want to get hurt? No, and I don't want the mare to either. Hey, you on. watch out now. All right, I'll stop her for you. It was a rotless piece of driving I've seen in all my days. Oh, she's a crazy horse. Got a tough mouth. She's not crazy, and she's got a mouth like a baby. I suppose you could hold her in. Oh, get out of there. I'll show you. Okay, show me. Tie up my horse and watch. Well, holler now if you need help. Oh, I will. Gee, she sure can drive, huh? She's pretty good, Sparky. I'm sorry I did so bad. I didn't think it was any different from regular driving. Yeah, no harm done. But it takes hands. Huh? Hands. Those two things your ten fingers are tied to. Spark, look at Char. 
Why, she can talk to a horse in a whisper with her hand. See? Yeah. Well, thanks a lot for letting me try. Goodbye. Goodbye. So long, boy. Hey, what's he leaving for? Well, what do you expect him to do after the way you bawled him out? Oh, I guess it wasn't very nice of me, but he made me so mad the way he saw it on Trumpet's mouth and then asked if I could hold her in. Well, boys never like it if you show them up. You ought to remember that. By all means, Charles. Oh, poo. Yes, you gotta have hands to drive behind a trotting horse. I found out long after how Sparky got his. All the time Thunder and me figured he was going to school, Sparky was back of our stable learning another kind of lesson from Lady and old Tuppy. Oh, come on, Tuppy. How much longer do I have to do this? You want hands, don't you? Well, sure, but... Then keep walking. Keep walking till you can feel through the lines what she is thinking. Then what? And keep walking till you can answer right back. But you getting it, boy. Yes, sir, you get it. He got it all right. Got it so well that one day he went over the fence again, drove for Mr. Bruce, and got himself a job. I don't know how you learned so quick, son, but you sure learned. Then you can use me? Yeah, see me in the morning. I believe I can. All right, Mose, take this horse. You did swell, Sparky. Oh, thanks. And you aren't mad at me for showing you up? Mad? Oh, if it hadn't been for you, I'd never learn to drive right. Oh, that's what I told Cree Cree. Who? Oh, you know, Mr. Bull's daughter. Oh, Cree Cree. Oh, her real name's Christopher. Just like mine's short for Charlotte. I don't see her around today. Oh, she's at boarding school. Uh, you've finished school, haven't you? Well, how could I get a job if I hadn't? <laughs> well, I'd better go now. I'll see you tomorrow, Sparky. Yeah. Goodbye, Char. Want some more coffee, Aunt Penny? No. No. And is sure going to be late for supper. Yes. Hey, what's he doing up there? Sounds just like he's drunk. He is drunk. Oh, I, I didn't know, Aunt Penny. I, I, I didn't mean anything. It's all right, Sparky. Look here, ma'am. Don't you get to thinking wrong things about Thunder. He's a good man. But once the year comes spring, he gets to hear the horses trotting. When that happens, seems like he can't no ways hold back from drowning out the sound with liquor. Now, that's all there is to it. I don't want to be buttoned in, but what happened, Aunt Penny? You know, between him and Mr. Bull. Well, boy, some men quarrel over women. With Godard Bull and Thunder, it was a horse. Eighteen years ago. And they was great friends then. Partners, too. They had a mare in a race. But something happened to one of her legs... And she lost. Godard didn't even wait to get her to the stables to shoot her. And when Thunder saw him do that, he just went crazy. He beat up on Godard till he nigh most killed him. Well, that was the beginning, Sparky. Godard set out to ruin Thunder. But Thunder fought him back. All he needed was money to keep Roundhouse Farmer going, and he figured on winning it in the next big race. But he lost. Seems like after that he lost most everything. Don't... <clears throat> don't have to tell you no more. You're seeing the rest for yourself. But if the stables were fixed up and if there were horses again and, and foals, he wouldn't have those spells. Maybe. But the stables ain't fixed up. And there ain't no horses. Except lady. And no foals. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll do the dishes. Leave him, Sparky. I'll just sit here a while. I said leave the dishes. Yes, ma'am. Good night. Late that night, I heard voices in the back of the house. Thunder was sleeping it off, and I was scared to wake him. I went to the window. Below, in the moonlight, I saw Sparky and one of the colored boys from the Boo farm. And then I saw someone else. It was Char, coming up quietly behind the berry bushes. They didn't see her. They didn't know that she was listening, too. But you shouldn't have done it, Sparky. You shouldn't have brought a hammer car chief over here. But nobody saw me. Nobody knows but you. Well, why'd you wake me up? And then I wouldn't have known either. 
Mr. Boone will find this out. He bought me alive. But he won't find out. Hammer car chief's back in the stable, and all we got to do is put the planks back in the fence. Listen, Mose. Lady's going to have a foal now. But, but what about the papers? Well, that's just it. You've got to help me get the papers for the foal. Maybe I can do that, but not without you got a hundred dollars. Oh, Mose, where am I going to get a hundred dollars? Well, how about Mr. Thunder? Oh, I can't tell him about it until I get the papers. Well, I got eight dollars a me that maybe I can collect. I got twelve so far for exercising horses. Let's see, that's twenty. We've eighty dollars shy only. Yeah. Well, I'll get it. Somehow I'll get it. Oh, Lord. Quiet now, Mose. We'll go fix that fence. <laughs> Good morning, Daddy. Good morning. Hey, what's the matter with you? Daddy, when is it all right not to tell? Why, you know the rules. You never tell a secret except for cash, profit, or a lie. Oh, Daddy, you're wonderful. Have you got twenty dollars? Twenty dollars? What do you want twenty dollars for? You said I didn't have to tell, but it's awfully important. Well, here. But it's coming out of your allowance, young lady, and don't you forget it. Oh, thanks, Daddy. Thanks, thanks. Morning, Susie. You know it's nine o'clock. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? Oh, helping nature a little. Huh? Plucking my eyebrows. Here, let me do yours for you. Oh, no. Daddy grabs me to death. Oh, come on, Charlie. He would notice just a couple. Oh, what's the sense of doing it then? Look, Creekly, I need $60. $60? $60? Well, what for? Well, I... I can't tell. Oh, Char, it's me. We don't have any secrets. Oh, please, Creekly, don't ask me, please. Well, where would I get $60? From your dad. Tell him you need new boots or something. Well, all right, I'll try. If you try right away, I'll tell you something else. What? Gordon's home from college. He phoned, but you were asleep. Well, why didn't you tell me? Well, the other's more important. Well, hurry, Creek, please, $60. Well, I'll be very happy to see, girl. Oh, that's what I told him. Oh, you? <laughs> Here's my 12 moles. Did you collect anything? Collections have been favorable. Now, if you won't, well, I could take this 20 to the meeting tonight and talk nice and soft to Mammy Luck. Barty! Quiet, Mose. Oh, I hello, Char. It. I got it here. $80. $80? But, but I followed you and Mo last night. It's all right, though. I don't have to tell on you. Here. But $80. Well, well, it's a loan. Oh, Char. Thanks. Oh, that's all right, Sparky. How would you get Mr. Boone to sign the certificate without him finding out? Now, don't you worry about that. You took care of the fee, I'll arrange about making it legal. But how? Well, Mr. Boone, he don't like that mean old chief horse. So when I bring him the papers to sign, he don't never bother none about reading. Now, I got seven of us here for him to sign. This one is just going to get lost in the shop. <laughs> I'm glad you're happy, Sparky. Happy? Oh, I'm so happy I... Whose car is that, Char? Gordon Bradley's. He's home from college. Came over to see Creek Creek. Well, if college is over, I guess school is over, huh? Yeah, it was over yesterday. Why? Well, then I've got no more excuse for being over here all day. Well, I thought you said you were through school. I didn't say school was through with me, though. Now I'll have to help Thunder with the farming. Couldn't I come over and see you? Well, sure. You could come swimming in the pond, and, and Aunt Penny would think you and Creek Creek were friends of mine from school. Do you think Cree-Cree had come? Oh, sure. Well, ask her, will you, Char? I, I gotta go now, and, and thanks a lot. And be sure and ask Cree-Cree, huh? Oh, sure, Sparky. I, I'll ask her. We'll be back in a minute with Act Two of Home in Indiana. But first, let's listen to one wife's embarrassing moment. She's in a restaurant with her soldier husband. When I'm away from you, Peggy, it seems you can't be as pretty as I remember. And when you see me? Why, you're even prettier than I thought. <laughs> Silly. I'm just an old married woman slaving away. It's a good thing you look at my face instead of my hands. Oh, I wish you didn't have to work so hard, Angel, but... Say, Peggy, there's a CO, and I think he's coming over here. Oh, Tom. Hold everything. Good evening, Sergeant. Good evening, sir. Oh, this is my wife, Major Barnes. Happy to meet you, ma'am. Oh, uh... How do you do? Tom, why did I have to meet him? Well, why ever not, honey? When we shook hands, why, he seemed to stare at mine. They're so awful, so red and rough. Chances are the Major wasn't thinking about Peggy's hands at all, but 
Poor Peggy. Those dishpan hands. They seemed as big as a house. Made her ill at ease. Now, if you've been embarrassed that way, if you think your hands have to be red and painfully rough because of dishwashing, just do one simple thing. It really works. Change from strong soaps to Lux Flakes for dishes. Lux really does help your hands to become soft and smooth again. Scores of women prove that Lux takes dishpan redness away. You can change dishpan hands to Lux hands for less than a penny a day. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Act two of Home in Indiana, starring Walter Brennan as Thunder, Charlotte Greenwood as Penny, Edward Ryan as Spark, Jean Crane as Cha, and June Haver as Cree Cree. <laughs> There's a pond near our lower pasture, and all that summer they come to swim there. Cree Cree and Char and Gordon Bradley. I'd see them at times. Char a following Sparky around, but him with no eyes except for Cree Cree. <laughs> That's a man, I guess. And Cree Cree smiling at Sparky with a kind of a smile you couldn't tell from a laugh. And that's a woman. And then one evening, Thunder found out about Lady, how she was going to have a foal. And he called Sparky in, his veins standing out on his forehead, but his voice low like he was saving all his wild strength to lay down on the boy. I just come from the stable, boy, and I got a strap in my hand. Yes, sir. Don't you hit him, Thunder. Don't hit him. Boy... I'm going to lick you. Get in here. Yes, sir. That lady's sweet. She's mine. She's all I got. And you take her and spoil her. Make her to some back alley critter. I'll wait you. I'll feed you. That's enough, Thunder. Heaven help you if you hit that boy again. I'll get the rifle. I swear I will. Well, I couldn't help myself. I just couldn't help myself. I've been wanting to tell you, Thunder. Anyway, here. What's that? The certificate for the fall when it comes. Certificate? Hamilcar Chief's desire. Why, you fool. You might have been hurt bad. That Hamilcar's a killer. Oh, no, sir. He and I are friends. Men. I could shoot the both of you. Spark, does Boo know anything about this? No, sir. He even signed it without looking. Says here it cost $100. Mose had eight, and I put in 12, and Char, she helped too. Okay, she did. Might. Who's Char? Char? Uh, Char Bruce. That's Mr. Bruce's daughter. Uh, let's see now. This means we'll have us an April Fool. And you ain't mad at me? Uh, no, son. I ain't mad. But before we close this meeting, I want to beg you not to regret the licking I give you. It's a long road you and me's going to travel, Sparky, and it never made a real man any less of a man to take an unjust belt or two along the way. Now get out of here. I got a lot of long-range figuring to do. So everything's all right now, boy. Everything's fine. No, it ain't. It's a shame, but there ain't nothing to be done about it now. Once bit, you stay bit. What's bit me? The horse bug. And it'll never let you rest. However, so be it. Why can't I go in there, too? Puppy's in there, Moses in there, but I can't go in there. Because they know about those things and you don't. Well, the least they can do is hurry. Don't you think you'd better sit down? Well, how can I sit down when the lady's having a fall? Well, she can have it just as easy that way. I'm sorry, Char. You know, it, it's wonderful to have someone stick by you at a time like this. Oh, gee, Sparky, I didn't do anything. Well, you got the money. Oh, that's just because I, I just happened to be around. Well, that's what I mean. That's what counts. Back. Come here, boy. It's come. The foe's come. Uh, look at her. Oh, gee. The sweetest fillies I've ever seen. What do we name her? She's Maudine Four. Yes, sir. Maudine Four. Look, Char. Look. What with a new filly? Christmas was on us that year before we knew it. The boy had a present for each of us. Me, he gave me slippers. And Thunder, he gave Thunder slippers. And he didn't forget Tuppy, he gave Tuppy slippers. And then we gave him his present, Maudine Four, all harnessed up to a brand new sulky. Mine? It, 
It's mine? Yep, from me and your aunt and tuppy. And fitted to you like the skin to an apple. You like it, boy? <laughs> like it? Like it? Oh, gee. Can I, can I try it? Oh, baby. How are you, baby? Just remember, son, she ain't never pulled your weight before, so just talk to her slow and gentle with your hands. All right, Tuppy, let her go. It's a pretty day, Mr. Thunder. Awful pretty day. It's all right, Maudine. Easy, baby. Easy. Oh, gosh. Hey, Cree Cree, come on. I'll be right out. Look, new car. Well. You're going out? Sure. Oh, but Sparky's coming over. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Did you get him anything for Christmas? No, that's what I mean. I forgot all about it. Oh, what'll I do? I, I don't have it. I know. Very simple. I'll give him this. What is it? The tie I was going to give Dad. Oh, Spark, you'll like it lot. You know, when I first saw Spark yesterday, I thought he'd change. But as soon as he opened his mouth, I knew he was the same old Spark. Still getting all tied up in knots when he just talks to a girl. Oh, Spark, he doesn't get tied up in knots with me. We talk all the time. Oh, that's different. You see him every day. Besides, what do you talk about? Oh, Horses, usually. That's what I mean. Hey, Merry Christmas. That's him, it's Sparky. Oh, I wish he'd stop using the back door every time he comes here. Oh, hello, Sparky. Hello. Hello, Sparky. How'd you get your colic to stay down? Saddle soap. Merry Christmas, Sparky. Well, I wouldn't know you all dressed up. Here. For me? Uh-huh. <gasps> Perfume. Kiss at midnight. Why, Spark Thornton. Well, it's printed in French. I didn't know what it meant, honestly. I'll bet you did. Mmm. Smell. Mmm. Smells kind of sweet. Here, smell, Char. Mmm. Oh, here's yours. Oh, gee, thanks, Sparky. Thanks. Well, what is it, Char? Come on, let's see. Oh, it, it's beautiful, Sparky. It, it's just beautiful. Keychain. Oh, thanks. I figured that even if you didn't have any keys, it was a mighty handy thing to have. Oh, it is. It'll fasten good onto your blue jeans. And now it's my turn. Just a little remembrance, Sparky. Oh, gee, gosh. I hope you like it. Something to wear. Oh, say, this is real good looking. Hey, Cree Cree, come on. What's holding you up? Come on in. Oh, well, Merry Christmas. Hi, Spark. Well, welcome to the club. Huh? Well, a tie. I've got one, too, except I'm wearing it. She must buy them wholesale. Gordon. I don't think that was very nice. Well, I guess I'll be going. And thanks for your present, Char. Opened it first thing. They're sure nice books. Well, I'll see you later. Spark! Yes? Gordon was just trying to be funny. I... I guess I'm not much good at making jokes. Well, no, you're not. But don't let that worry you. He's not so good either. Well, goodbye, Cree Cree. Goodbye, Sparky. Goodbye. They spent the winter, the boy and thunder, clearing off our old roundhouse track and caring for the filly and teaching her. Come spring and summer, they started working her. Your hands are good, boy, but now it's pace. Pace! I'll take the lady to the 220 clip for one lap and you fall him. When I pull up, you take the filly for another full half. You mean I can let her out? No! Take her a second faster than 220, and you and me's gonna tangle again. She ain't ready to be asked what she can do yet, and you ain't ready to ask her. Now, come on. Later on, when Char would come over, Thunder'd let her take Lady, and they'd race around the track, she and the boy. And Thunder would watch and teach. Always watch. Well, Sparky. Well, I figure by now I know how to get out of a wheel lock. It's a long road ahead of you, boy. But you're ready to make a start. Thanks. Hey, go on, let her out, man. If she clocks what she ought to, why, we're ready to pick ourselves off a stake. A stake race? You mean you'll start her off in a stake race? You don't think we start Maudini in a claimer, does you? Go on now. We got things to do. Sparky, afterward, could we go for a swim? Well, Thunder says so, sure. Swell. <laughs> Sparky, 
Let's go in the water again. Yeah, in a minute. You know, you know what? What? You're wonderful. Gee, if you'd have been a fella, we'd have been the greatest friends in the world. Well, what's wrong with me the way I am? Oh, nothing, but, well, you know how guys are. Oh, there's Cree Cree. I know. She got back from the mountains yesterday. Hi, Spark. Hello, Char. Hello. Oh, I didn't know you were home, Cree Cree. Well, didn't Char tell you? I forgot. I'd have come over to see you. Oh, well, as long as you didn't, we came over to see you. Oh, I'm glad you did. Are uh, you too, Gordon? Thanks. Well, how's the water? Oh, it's swell. Say, you have a marvelous tan, Spark. And you've gained weight, too. Some, yeah. I'm going in. Coming, Cree Cree. Right away. Sparky, remember the first time we went swimming? Oh, sure. Every time you dived in, I was afraid your trunks would come off. <laughs> <laughs> so was I. <laughs> oh, it's so good to see you, Spark. You know, I was just... Well, where's Char going? I don't know. Uh, excuse me a second, Cree Cree. Char! Hey, Char! Well? Hey, wait a minute. Don't go. Oh, I, I think I'll get on home. Well, I'll walk home with you. You don't have to. Are you mad about something? Why should I be? All right, then. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Bye. Cree-cree! Hey, Cree-cree! A month later, we were at the Mentonville Fairground. Sparky's first race, and Maudine's. The Bulls were there, too. They must have brought Char along. Before the first heat, I saw her come up to the rail where Thunder was standing. Hello, Thunder. Getting on Maudie and Ford? Oh, hello, Char. Say, you kept a secret pretty good once. I'm asking to keep this one. If Spark knew I'd bet all I could dig up on Maudine's nose for this heat, it might upset him some. Oh, I won't tell. Could I see Maudine? Mm, I'd be pleased if you would. They're hot. It's no... Hello, Sparky. Gosh, Maudine's pretty, like cedar. She smells as clean as the inside of a red cedar chest. You haven't been over in weeks. Well, I... Uh... Look, you were sore on account of I didn't walk home with you that day we went swimming. I said I was sorry. You needn't be. People being sorry just makes other people mad. It isn't your fault you don't like me. Don't like you? I do so, Char. Spark. What? Uh, sir? You drawed number eight in the second tier. Could have been worse. Yes, sir. Now, listen close, boy. I picked this track for your first race because who's driving the guinea? They ain't the best in the world, but they don't come no trickier. And three of them are behind bull horses. What are you trying to do, Scammy? Listen to me. I ain't saying it ain't fine to be brave, but a little fear's a healthy thing to have. Yeah, it's just my... It's just that they might try to hedge off into the rail or, or like your wheels or something. So remember what I told you. Now, man up, boy, and do your best. The winner, Maudine Four, owned by J.T. Bolt, driver Spark Thornton. Second, Stella Hanover, owned by Godolph Bull, please play dryer up. Third, Bob Hunter, owned and driven by J. Miller. They won the first heat, the filly and the boy. Thunder near went wild with joy. And in the stand, I saw Godolph Bull's face turn blacker and tuppies. And then I saw Cree Cree laughing. And she got up, and I had a good idea who she was going to see. Spark, you were wonderful. That was really swell driving. Oh, thanks, but that was only the first heat. You know, Dad's having 25th. I don't see how you managed to keep your filly such a secret. Uh, did Char know? Well, she kind of found out about it, so I had to tell her. You could have told me, Spark. I wish I had. Well, well I got to go now, Cree Cree. That's the bell for the second heat. Well, wait a minute. Here, and you wear this. Oh, your scarf. But I'll get it all dirty. For good luck, Sparky. Oh, gosh, thanks, Cree Cree. Come on, Maudine. Come along, baby. Come along. This is the second heat, ladies and gentlemen. On the rail, Stella Hanover, owned by Mr. Godall Bull and driven by Fleet Fed Dryer. Number two, Bob Hutter with Eddie Ferguson. Number three, Maudine Ford, driven by Spark Thornton. D.J. Bolt, owner, and on the outside, Bob McLaren and Dixie. All right, turn your trotters. Turn your trotters. 
Approach. No hurry now. Hold your position, number one. Mr. Ferguson, keep that horse back there. Hold back, Thornton. Hold back. That's it. Steady now. Steady. Go! Watch yourself, kid. I'll run you right off the track. Never mind me. You take care of yourself. Move over there, Ferguson. Hey, look out. I'm coming through. Hold it, boy. Not yet. Not Come yet. Come on, Morty. Take him, baby. Take him again. Steady, boy. Steady. Now, Spock. Now. Let it go, boy. Let it go. Thunder, look. Look, he's against the rail. They're forcing him against the rail. The wheel's locked. They're ramming him. They're doing it a purpose. A purpose. Ah! He's smashing the rail. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. We'll be back with Act Three of Home in Indiana in just a moment. Oh, Mr. Kennedy. Yes, Sally? It's still leap year, isn't it? Even though we've passed February 29th? Yes, but if you've found someone you want to propose to, you better hurry up. <laughs> no such luck. But I did find an interesting leap year superstition. If a girl proposes to a man and he turns her down, then he has to give her a silk dress. He'd have a hard time finding one these days. Wouldn't rayon do? Sure. The rayons we get now are just as pretty as silk. And we wear them for everything. And give them the same care as silks, don't you, Sally? Well, almost the same. Using Lux Flakes, of course. But rayons do need a few special touches, like handling them extra gently. We must never rub or wring rayons or use too hot water or strong soaps. Why, treating them that way can leave the colors faded, literally washed out. Just ghosts to their former selves. That's a sad story these days when we're supposed to make things last. Oh, but it's true. We proved it with actual wash tests. Rayons that were washed the wrong way soon looked old and drab. Cheer up, Sally. Remember the happy ending. The things that were washed the Lux way stayed bright and colorful three times longer. I guess the moral of this story is never risk rayons in soaps that are strong. Lux care means loveliness ever so long. And now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. After the play, you're invited to join us backstage for a friendly chat with our stars. Now here's Act Three of Home in Indiana, starring Walter Brennan as Thunder, Charlotte Greenwood as Penny, Edward Ryan as Spark, Jean Crane as Char, and June Haver as Cree Cree. <laughs> it was Sparky who got up first after the crash, and then after Thunder had cut her loose, Maudine Four but one of her feet didn't touch the ground. She carried it loose and limp-like. As gently as they could, they led her to her stall. Easy, baby. Easy. Thunder, are you... Are you going to have to get rid of her? No, no. Whatever give you such a thought? It's only a quarter crack. Oh. Never did ask how you are, boy, but when I seen you get up, I figured you was alive. Oh, I'm all right, but... I wrecked her. I wrecked her showing off. Uh, you was framed, son. Flea flit dryer done it. That was no accident. Dryer? Come on now, help me load her on the truck. You load her, Thunder. I got something else to do. Sparky. Oh, hello, Char. I'm so awfully sorry, Sparky. I, I was scared to come back here. I thought I'd hear a shot and... Quarter crack. Maybe she'll race again and maybe not. Where are you going? I'll be back later. Mose. Hey, Mose. Yes, sir? Paula Sparky, he's fixing to get himself in trouble. Yes, sir. And you're going to let him do it? Sure. Free flip might have killed them both. And as I see it, Sparks got something to settle. All I can do is see that the odds is right. Get along, Mose. Sparky won't need Mose. Free flip might. Oh, can I drive home with you? Daddy said I could. Oh, I'd like that fine, Char. Believe Sparky would, too. We was late coming home, a long drive and without words. 
On the way, we picked up a blacksmith. And all that night, the lanterns burned in our stable. Thunder, is there nothing I can do? Sure, showing you what you can do. Set yourself down, shut up. The bar shoe's about ready, Thunder. Hold it now, Tuppy. Brush on that balsam. If it hurts you, Marty, and you wants to bite something, here I is, honey. All right. Stand away. You youngin', see what he's doing? The frog's a cushion for the foot. When that goes out of business, all we can do is rig up a substitute. You can set it down, Tuppy. Set her foot down. Poor little baby. Poor baby. If she sets a weight on it now, she's cured. Loose her lines. That's right. Put your foot down, Maudine. Try it. Try it, please. She's done it. She's standing on it. Barton, she's cured. She's running, look. <laughs> <laughs> Better catch her, boy, before she spreads it again. Yes, Modine was cured. But it'd be months before she'd race again. The boy clung to the filly like a she-bear to its cub. So it weren't until he went off to see Cree one day that old Tuppy got the chance he'd been waiting for. Oh, you're crazy, Tuppy. Her foot's all right. It's fine. It ain't her foot. It's her eyes. What? Look. Hmm. Just like a mar. Just like the lady. How long she got? I don't know. I have to get a vet to find that out. He ain't bothered her sight yet. She still can see fine. But there ain't no telling. Uh, don't say nothing to Sparky about this. Where'd the boy go? See Miss Creekery, I reckon. And he ain't no boy at the moment, Mr. Tudner. Sparky's grew it up. Nonetheless, no need for him to know about this. Lee has to. Nice little filly. Sweet little girl. Don't you worry not, honey. You's going to see plenty yet. Plenty. <laughs> Goodbye, Spark. Would you write me from college, maybe, Cree Cree? Of course. But I won't see you again till Christmas. Well, you'll be coming to the Chester Clay Trots, won't you? Mordine will be there, and me too. Yes, but so will 50,000 others. Sparky? Yeah? You'd like to kiss me goodbye, wouldn't you? Cree Cree. Well, why don't you then? Well... You really take a girl at a word, don't you? I... I told you I wasn't much good at making jokes. I wasn't joking. What? You don't know how different you are, do you, Spark? You seem older and changed. Why, you're not like any boy I've ever known. I wanted you to kiss me, you see? What was that? What was what? I heard somebody. Cree Cree. Is that you, Char? The car's ready. Your dad says to hurry. Well... Well, come on in, Char. Sparky's here. Do you think she... Of course not. Char? Char? She's gone. Char's gone. There's nothing anywhere like the Chester Clay County Fair. From all over the country they come, the finest trotting horses and the men who race them. I never saw Thunder happier. He was one of them again. They shook his hand and said how they was proud to have him back. There was a dance night before the race. Sparky stopped by to watch for a minute. They was both there, too. Cree Cree and Char. What's the matter with you, Char? Didn't you hear me whistle at you? Oh, was that me you were whistling at? Uh, oh, this is Tad Drake. Spark Thornton. Hi. Hi. And what do you think you're doing here? Jitterbug. Oh, you all learn it, Spark. I don't have time to learn it. And since when do you go around grinning at all the fellas? They're all staring at you. Well, if they don't stare at me, they'll stare at someone else. What kind of talk is that? Look, no one has to tell me how to act. Sure, I don't know what's got into you, but well, I don't like it. Well, I do. Want me to take care of this fella for you, baby? You don't have to. She hit me hard enough. See Char again till after the first heat next day. He placed fourth. Not too good but good enough to keep him in the race. And then he found her over to where the bull horses were stabled. The girl's father was driving Stella Hanover. They'd won the first heat. 
You were wonderful, Daddy, wonderful. That Sparky did all right, too. It's all right with me if you root for him just a little bit. Oh, I love you, Daddy. <laughs> That's fine. Turn around, you've got company. Char. Good luck, Sparky. I'll see you out there. Thanks. I'm sorry, Char, about last night. That's all right, Sparky. I was just a big fool, that's all. But when I saw you like like that, well, I was just a big fool. Char, what's the matter with me? Don't you know? I only know that I want for us to be friends again. Will I see you after the races? If you want to. And we're friends again? Sure. Good friends. Oh, gosh, Char. Well, I, I guess I have to go now. Good luck, Sparky. Thanks, Char. Goodbye, and... And Char? Yes? I don't want for us to be just good friends anymore. Hey, pretty lucky, wasn't you, Squid? I'm warning you, Flea Flit. You keep away from me. <laughs> You're going to get boxed off so fast you won't know what happened. You try any tricks and I'll kill you. No tricks, sonny. Just good driving. I ain't going to win this race. Bruce is. Him and Stella Hanover. Why do you think we both wait for Golden Bulls? Ladies and gentlemen, $10,000 futurity for our two-year-old trotters. With Stella Benson, Lance Butter, Maudine Four, and Swiss Helm qualifying. All right, men, turn your horses. Go well up now and together. I said together, Mr. Walker. What's that now? Dryer. Wait till they're on the trot. Don't be in a hurry now. Thornton, that's Mr. Bruce on the pole. Remember that. Easy. Easy all together now. That's it. That's it. Hold it. Hold it. Go! Go! Mr. Thunder, look. They got him again. They got him. Look out, boy, look out. Every time they do it on that far turn. Yeah, that's why Bull's racing two horses. One to take care of Spark and one to win. It's bunched up so. Three fits pushing him off to the rail. And right about now, Flea Flip's wheel is going to come loose. What you say? Nobody touched this wheel, Tuppy, but... Then, then, what you mean? Hush up and start praying. Let's go, kid, now take Take him over, Dryer. Move her out. Guilty of my munitions, Squid. Move her out, Ramya. Take him, Jed. I got him. Hey, your wheel's loose, Dryer. Get over. Your wheel's loose. Jed, Jed, my wheel's loose. I'll pull it over. Thanks, Dryer. Now go, baby. Go. That's it. Hey, up. Oh, that's it, baby. That's it. <laughs> Wanted to see me, Mr. Boo? You bet I do, Jed. You let that red-haired pup of a kid make a monkey out of you again, and you're out of a job. The kid won. He won fair. You heard me, didn't you? I'll drive to win, you know that. But win or lose, you and your job can go to the devil. We'll talk about that later. You just win this third heat. I'll win if I can, but what I said still goes. Where's Thunder, Tuppy? You're still at the reel, boy. Waiting to see you come out and win again. This is your last chance, Sparky. I know. Your last chance to save him. It's the almighty's wonder you brung him nearly all the way back. Mr. Thunder's looking straight through tomorrow, and he sees good things ahead. There ain't no empty stables where he's looking. Sure, Tuppy, sure. You lose now and all his hopes. They'll shrivel up like dead weeds, and Roundhouse and everybody in it will be licked again. Oh, I don't want that to happen, Tuppy. Then you know what to do. I'll be praying with you until you cross that finish line first. Thanks, Tuppy. I'll sure do my best. Good boy. Good boy. This is the major event, ladies and gentlemen. We have two heat winners. On the rail, Stella Benson, owned by Godal Bull, with Jed Bruce driving. On the outside, Maudine Ford, T.J. Bold owner, with Spark Thornton. All right, bring your fillies up. Bring them up. Be no tricks this time, Sparky. Thanks, Mr. Bruce. This time, the best horse wins. Well, up now. All right, turn slow. Slow. Now, let's have him on the trot. Don't try to come too fast. Hit the wire together. Take a hold, please. Take a hold. Watch your heavy there, Thornton. Get her off that rail. Go on. Back now, both of you. You'll have to approach again. We want a clean start here, please. 
happened, Tuppy? Her eyes. She walked straight into the rail. Sparky, he don't know. He don't know what's wrong. She race. She trusts his hands. He's got good hands, Tuppy. Good hands. That's better. All right now. Not too fast. Now start together. Take on. Take on. Wait that way. All right. Go! Go! We lived a hundred years those next two minutes. Thunder at the rail. Never moving. Never saying a word. And old Tuppy, his head bowed next to him. And the people in the stand suddenly quiet like as if they knew they were seeing such a race as never they'd see again. They were neck and neck, those fillies, when they came around the last turn and suddenly the crowd came to life, all shouting and screaming as the horses flew past them to the finish line. won the race, Sparky and a little filly who had gone blind. And as Sparky stern turned her to drive back to the stand, Maudine, head high, walked helpless like into the fence. And then the boy knew, and he took her head in his arms and cried like a baby. And thunder ran out on the track, and the girl charred. Maudine, baby, blind. Blind. Sparky. Oh, Sparky. I done it to you, Maudine. I must have done it to you. No, you didn't. It was the hand of the Lord that touched her. It's been coming on her since she was full. Be thankful she got to do what she was bred to do and take heart and lift your head before you shame her. Now, come. We drove back to Roundhouse Farm, and in the back of the truck together was Maudine and Char and Sparky. Oh, Sparky, I've got to. I just got to cry. Oh, no, you don't, Char. Didn't you hear what Thunder said? She needn't be unhappy or suffer or go hungry ever. No, never hungry and never unhappy. There'll be another Maudine, Char, someday. And she'll be trotting around the cornfield track with Maudine Four alongside, steadying her and, and teaching her, just like she was taught by the lady. Only then, well, then the track will be plowed, and there'll be a fence around it, and the barns will be painted green and white. And your dad, well, he'll be the head trainer for Thunder. And Mose, Mose will do all the work so Tuppy can just take care of Maudine Four and the lady. Oh, we're going to have the top best farm in Indiana, aren't we, Char? Sure, Sparky. If you say so. Oh, I feel so good. So darn good. Our stars return for their curtain calls in just a moment. Now, let's eavesdrop as Carrie, the career girl, is getting dressed for work in the morning. She's looking through a bureau drawer for some stockings. Oh, this one's got a run in it. Wait. Gosh, seems like they've all got runs. Oh, here's a good one. Uh, oh, wrong again. I'll never have time for breakfast if I don't find some decent stockings. Let's see. The pair I washed last night? Mm, still sort of damp, but they'll just have to do. There. Now, my other shoe hmm, must be under the bed. Uh, oh, another run. And they were practically new. Well, I'll just have to wear them till lunchtime anyway. Carrie, Carrie, maybe it's your own fault stockings don't wear. Do you give them proper care? That strong soap you've been using, that's not good for them. And hot water, oh, that's bad. And another thing. Dry those rayons at least 24 hours if you want them to wear. Dance threads can't stand strain so well. If you'll give your stockings gentle lux care, I think you'll find they wear much longer. Lukewarm water, mild lux flakes, no rubbing, no twisting, 
just gentle washing. Strain test proves stockings last twice as long that way. And now, back to Mr. DeMille and our stars. As our stars join us for a well-deserved curtain call, we owe a special vote of thanks to Walter Brennan, Charlotte Greenwood, Edward Ryan, Jean Crane, and June Haver. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. Oh, Jean, now that you and June are both stars, you know you're privileged to call Mr. DeMille CB. Me too? Now, wait a minute, Eddie. Now, one at a time. This is a little like graduation, remember? You mean, Miss Greenwood, a CB is as good as a BA? Uh, well, June, in Hollywood, it, it'll get you further. <laughs> I, I think you're exaggerating a bit, Walter. When you worked for me in the Buccaneer, you called me by two other letters. <laughs> oh, yes, you. And... Yes, and now I'm not working for you anymore. <laughs> well, whether or not you, you young people call me Mr. Young people, CB? <laughs> uh, well... <laughs> I, I, I was really talking about uh, Jean and June and Eddie. Oh, thank you, Mr. DeMille. Well, I, I think you're all three off to a great start with the movie-loving people of America. And with the slightly older Walter and Charlotte, you've set us a high standard for our play next Monday evening. What's the play going to be, C.B.? The next Monday night, we have another exciting drama from the pageant of America. The 20th Century Fox success in old Chicago. And our stars will be Dorothy L'Amour, Robert Young, and John Hodiak. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, it's the lusty tale of a city struggling to be born and of the men and women who fought and loved and died to make it great. Sounds like great entertainment for both old and young, C.B. <laughs> Good night. 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 Families in 47 other states were at home in Indiana tonight. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Robert Young, Dorothy L'Amour, and John Hodiak in In Old Chicago. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. And now, an urgent message from Uncle Sam. Paper is a critical war material. When you're shopping, help save paper by bringing your own shopping bag or basket. Don't ask to have things wrapped if you can carry them unwrapped. Home in Indiana was presented through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, who will soon present June Haver in Damon Runyon's Irish Eyes Are Smiling and Jean Crane in Moss Hart's Winged Victory. Walter Brennan is under contract to Samuel Goldwyn and will shortly be seen in the Goldwyn Technicolor comedy The Princess and the Pirate. He appears through the courtesy of Warner Brothers Pictures and will shortly be seen in To Have and Have Not. Starting October 15th, Charlotte Greenwood will be heard on her own radio program, in behalf of Hallmark Greeting Cards. Edward Ryan is appearing in Daryl F. Zanuck's Technicolor feature, Wilson. Clarence Muse appeared tonight as Tuppy. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear In Old Chicago with Robert Young, Dorothy Lamour, and John Hodiak. Hear ye, hear ye. Kate Smith and Aunt Jenny join up to bring you their friendship cocoa cake. Lusciously light, chocolatey layers piled with fluffy sea foam frosting. So delicious and so easy. Made in five minutes in just one bowl with new Easy Make Spry. See the Spry ad in October women's magazines and newspapers. Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of In Old Chicago with Dorothy L'Amour, Robert Young, and John Hodiak. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.